Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and today I'm going to test this Yaesu FT2900R 2 meter radio for frequency error, RF power output, deviation, and receiver sensitivity. The device we are testing today is the Yaesu FT2900 Analog FM 2 meter mobile radio, which is a very solid, no nonsense radio capable of 70 watts of RF power out in a specified receiver sensitivity of minus 121 decibel milliwatts at 12 dB. The radio is capable of operation on 25 and 12 and a half kilohertz channels. The chassis of the radio is a solid monolithic aluminum casting acting as a heat sink. There's no fan in this radio. The display is large and easy to see. The VFO channel selector knob is large and easy to manipulate, and the radio features knob controls for volume and squelch, which are also nice. Now, the Achilles heel of these radios is the microphone, and when found in the wild, most of the time the microphones are inoperative or have severely damaged mic cords. The microphones available at reasonable cost online for these radios are almost all counterfeit junk, but, of course, your mileage may vary. If interested, I can do a video on converting surplus radio microphones to the FT2900R. If you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments. For these tests, I am going to use my Marconi service monitor. Now, timing matters, and for my frequency standard, I am using a GPS disciplined rubidium oscillator with distribution amplifier that I put together. I am connecting our device under test to my service monitor utilizing a universal service cable that I also build. This cable can accept multiple interface heads and they are radio specific and they also are constructed here. Needless to say, the cable is DC isolated from the service monitor. The device under test is powered by a 35 amp linear power supply. RF from the device under test is fed with a 6-foot jumper of RG142 and it's fed into the service monitor with the TXRX systems sample T and it features a minus 30 dB sample port to allow the signal sample to be connected to my spectrum analyzer or oscilloscope as needed. The service cable hooks to two locations on the service monitor. Speaker audio from the device under test is fed into the AF input port and the microphone input of the device under test is connected to the AF generator output. If there's any bias voltage on the mic line, it is DC blocked in the service cable. Push to talk closure is accomplished with a detachable momentary switch at the interface head. So our first test we're going to do is going to be a combination of RF power out, deviation, and frequency stability and all of this is accomplished at the exact same time so when we hit transmit you can hear our audio that's being injected into our microphone so in the first four lines at a glance we have the data we are looking for on line one we see the frequency and our frequency error is minus 238 Hertz line two is our RF power of 72 watts and taking into account the two tenths of a dB of cable loss puts our output power at tad over 75 watts. Line 3 is the frequency of our AF generator. I can also measure PL frequency if desired here by turning off the AF generator and turning on PL in the device under test. Line 4 is our deviation which is just about perfect and falls into my desired window of four and a quarter to four and a half kilohertz for a 25 kilohertz channel. So our next test is going to be our receive sensitivity, change the service monitor to receiver test, and then open your squelch up all the way. So now we test our receiver sensitivity. The RF generator is injecting a signal on our tuned frequency into the antenna port at a level of minus 122.2 decibel milliwatts, modulated with a 1 kilohertz tone at a level of 3 kilohertz. Accounting for cable loss adjusts this level to minus 122.5 decibel milliwatts. This level of signal is giving us 12 dB of cyanide. The specification calls for a level of two tenths of a microvolt of signal, which equates to minus 121 decibel milliwatts. So in this test, our receiver is exceeding specifications. 
Well, it takes a lot less time to do this testing than it does to actually film it. The only thing I saw that concerned me was the frequency error was like 238 hertz, which is no big deal. In, in the service of this radio, you probably wouldn't even notice that stuff. However, I know it's a problem, so I'm going to go ahead and put it through an alignment process really quickly and just align the reference oscillator, which is a real piece of cake on this radio, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. Now, you have to understand that the radio, when you look at the specifications, it's rated for plus or minus 10 parts per million. Well, when you look at 10 parts per million, that's like 1.5 kilohertz at 150 megahertz. However, that's like the maximum amount of drift that the radio is going to drift, and you would definitely notice uh, being off frequency by one and a half kilohertz. So let's go ahead and power this down and put this through an alignment process. So you hold this at megahertz and then power the radio up, and you'll see your display changes just slightly like that. Go ahead and de energize the radio again. Now hit the down and the memory write buttons and power the radio up and right now we are in the reference oscillator alignment screen so what we do at this time is is we hit the memory write button and you'll see our display changes and this is our number here so our original number was B4 and we execute a push to talk sequence and our radio is transmitting and what we do is is we take and move this and watch the result on a frequency counter or in this case on my service monitor and we want to look for as close to 146 megahertz as we can and that looks like that's going to be about it there so now we de-key our radio and we go ahead and hit the DW key We go ahead and power the radio off, then hit set in megahertz and power the radio up and we're back and now we'll confirm our frequency. Awesome. So we have went from a frequency error of minus 238 hertz to plus 2 hertz. Again, for 25 kilohertz analog FM, an error of 238 hertz is not earth shattering. But with just a few key presses, it's easy to improve that as shown here. Well, I hope you found this content useful and entertaining. And I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comps. Until next time.